please. Thank you very much. So um, the title of my talk is uh, Bio-inspired materials from trees. And uh, in addition to biomime, I'm also active in uh, Wallenberg Wood Science Center. The illustration here with palm trees is perhaps a little bit odd with respect to the fact that we're primarily working with, um, let's say, Nordic trees. But the reason I wanted to show it is that um, it sort of illustrates one of the main differences between engineering structures made by man and those made by nature. Usually, the structures in nature are highly flexible. And the reason, obviously, is that they, they need to be flexible in order to survive. But I think the, the palm tree in the wind is a very good illustration. So the principles for the design are completely different. And, and actually, one of the methods is to use liquids to soften the material. Uh, to say a few words about uh, Wallenberg Wood Science Center, this is a major uh, effort from the Wallenberg Foundation. They're putting in 400 million crowns for 10 years. And the idea is to find new ways of using um, Nordic trees. And I, I will not say too much about that. It's a joint center between KTH and Chalmers. And uh, maybe I can say a little bit about the context it's not about improving the existing forest products. The starting point will be something different. We will try to use the, the knowledge generated in the biotechnology field to sort of selectively take out bioplastics and fibers from the tree in a different way than it has been done uh, so far. But actually, I wanted to um, start in another end. I was uh, traveling last week. I, I picked up the most recent copy of National Geographic, and it's actually... There's an image there which is a mosaic of several hundred pictures, but it's a, it's a redwood tree. It's uh, 100 meters high, and the age of this tree is 1,500 years. I think it's, uh, it's actually a, quite a good illustration of the potential. Actually, I should be a little bit careful here. It's a, it's a very good illustration of, um, of the potential of, um, of these bioplastics from trees. Because the, if I should put up one reason why it's possible for a tree to become 100 meters high, it's really cellulose. Cellulose is a remarkable uh, material. As, as you saw already, it's essentially a nanofiber. And it's a nanofiber with um, similar properties to Kevlar. And... Uh, I think there's an incredible potential if we could utilize that Kevlar fiber in trees and other plant materials. And that's actually the main um, topic I'd like to focus on. So um, these, these trees, they are built to last and they're also built to dominate. They've been competing for a long time. It means the organization of the cellulose is such that it provides the maximum performance. And mechanical function, as you can imagine, is very important for a 100-meter tree. Uh, so what we're doing is essentially that we're starting with, um, if we call it paper fibers, taking out the, the nanofiber that makes up the cell wall. And this uh, work is done in collaboration between KTH and Invencia. And those fibers, the question is then, what can we do with these fibers that uh, provides us with new possibilities? And I think perhaps um, to provide some, some reference here, you can take an, an egg box, which is a highly functional component. It's a material that is essentially composed by cellulose. But if I, if I tear it apart, it's... I think you have difficulties believing me when I'm saying this is a super fiber. And uh, the reason is that uh, this type of component is really developed to be low cost and to be able to process very, very quickly. And I think one of the things we really should try to do for the future is to utilize the cellulose because it has much better performance than we have uh, made use of so far. And um, one illustration of that is the next one here. Um, we made uh, nanopaper based on these um, fibrils. And uh, this paper is completely different from conventional paper. This particular version is actually modified with a liquid as well. So this is more like a tough um, leathery composite material which has uh, exceptional mechanical properties. So if we look at, um, yeah, this is, the <laughs> this is the structure. Actually, the main thing here to realize is that if conventional paper is based on, uh, on um, 
cells from the tree, the, the elongated fibrous cells which compose the organism. So let's say they, are, they have a dimension which is similar to the width of this room. Then the width of the nanofiber is in the order of, of uh, centimeters. So it means the structure of this paper is, is uh, three orders of magnitude finer. So it means there is much smaller risk for, for defects and also the interaction between the individual nanofibers. They bond much more strongly to each other. And uh, if you measure these properties, the main thing is that the strength is something like four times the strength of normal paper. But the most interesting thing that this is also tough. Regular paper is quite brittle. It, fails at a few percent. If you look at the scale there, 10 percent is what you can stretch the nanopaper, whereas a conventional paper can only be stretched uh, two or three percent. And also it's much stiffer than regular plastic, so this is actually quite an interesting material. And the reason why conventional paper is not as good is basically that when we try to tear it apart, we're not really breaking the fibers, we are tearing the fibers apart. They they never break. It's more dominated by the uh, bonding between the large fibers. I wanted also to uh, say something about uh, porous materials because really if we can take the tree apart into smaller constituents, we can be much more creative. We can put together materials that come from, from bioresources which have been synthesized in an environmentally friendly way the Kevlar fiber I was talking about, you need uh, very high temperatures, you need uh, nasty solvents, you need uh, high pressure in order to make these materials high temperatures. And nature is doing this um, for us for free, so to speak. We need to take it out, obviously, but then we have a possibility to create new materials and structures. 